Okay, welcome to lesson 15. In this video and the next three, so 15, 16, 17, and 18, I will be talking about looping. This is a way to iterate over a number of statements a number of times. That's as easy as it gets, as long as the condition that we're looking for remains true. So let me show you what I'm talking about with this simple example of a while loop. While a condition, do this set of instructions. So I start out with an initialized variable, i equals zero, and then while i is less than five, it's going to go round and round and round for the GS info statement and i++. Note that I've got the curly braces out here because I've got two statements to do. If I did not, what would happen? It would print the number zero over and over and over because that i++ would never get incremented and i would never get out of bounds for this counter. So if I walk through this, it's going to iterate five times. So the first time through, i is zero. Is zero less than five? Yes. Then print the value, which is going to print a zero. Then increment the value to a one. Comes back up to the while. Is i less than five? Yes, one is still less than five. Print out the one and increment it. Is two less than five? Yes. Print it, increment it. Is three Four. Now we get to the final one where it increments it from four to five. Five is not less than five. This evaluates to false. And then it falls through and says, I'm done and I have a final value of five. So even though the loop printed out zero, one, two, three, four, that is five values, zero, one, two, three, four, a sixth one is going to print at the end and the value, final value will be five because it did the increment, then it did the comparison, Comparison failed, but the variable is still at that value. Let's run it and test it to see if my theory is correct. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Final value is 5. That is a very simple case of a while loop. Almost always you are going to need those curly braces. I haven't found too many while loops that uh, you need to stay in there with one statement. It, 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 could be a little crazy. You could, however, uh, one case might be uh, when we get into functions, you might be calling some subroutine or some function and it returns a value that you want to evaluate. So I've, I've almost always got them on just as a best practice. And again, I can throw in a debug statement very, very easily. Now for the second example in this while loop, I'm going to introduce a couple new things. Remember the switch statement? Well, the switch statement had a break. Okay, this is a very crazy example of how this works. Same situation where I'm going to check a variable. I initialize it to zero and while true, remember it stays in this loop as long as this thing in the parentheses is true. That is always true. It's kind of a weird thing to see true or false as just exposed it by itself. But this is what we call an infinite loop if it weren't going to have a condition to break it. Here is a condition that says, hey, is i5? If it is, let's get out of here. Break does the same thing as it does in switch. It says, we're done. Stop executing this chunk of code, this block of code, which in this case is the while statement. And then it falls down here. So let's put a GS info done, just to say that the loop is done. We should see a zero. Oh, it's not even printing anything. This is the interesting part. I don't have it displaying any information. So let's add one more statement in here to say GS info. And while it's in the loop, it's going to say I. First time through, it will be zero. Zero doesn't compare to five. It will print that one, two, three, four, five. It effectively does the same thing before, but note that I'm not saying I less than five. I'm saying I equals five. So how many will it print? Let's find out. One, two, three, four, done. Say zero, one, two, three, four, done, sorry. It, same result, but in this case, I get into the loop because this is true, and then the comparison happens. To say, are you five yet? I could say, is it less than five? What do you think will happen? This is where we download the script and we try it out, right? You can do this yourself, and it just says, done. So if it's less than five, zero is less than five, hey, that's true. Ooh, not good, let's get out of here. Okay, watch out for something like this. Maybe further down in your script, you might have another plus plus i. Could be in an if, could be in an else. And if you stuck with the original script, this is going to skip right over five. It will go zero, 
Increment once, increment twice. Two, four, six. Ooh, not good. So you may, in fact, want that as a safety gate in case it goes two, four, six, and doesn't hit five, you will have yourself a bona fide infinite loop. And you will see a counter at the top of the screen start counting that says, hey, this is running away. Do you want to cancel that transaction? You say yes. Okay, so that is break as one example. That does what you expect. There's another one, you guessed it, called continue. Now continue, I don't use it too often, but again, it's nice to know that it's there. What happens is, we're going to do a similar example here. Initialize to zero. Here's a counter variable, i. Then I'm going to have a Boolean called done. And say, while not done, again, I'm putting it into sort of an infinite loop unless I have a way of breaking out of it. But instead of a break, I am going to take a different approach and say, as long as i is less than five, increment it and continue. Continue says, stop the loop right here do not proceed any further with the statements below it in this block of code, in the rest of the while loop. Jump back up and evaluate again. Go back to the while statement. So first time through, it starts out with I. Sets done to false. While not done, we're not done. So I love the way these read too, when, when done is false. While not done. Just a great way to do this. If I is less than five, yes, I is less than five. It's still zero. Increment it to one and continue. Again, I don't have any output in here, so it's going to continue up here. Still not done. i is less than five. Yes, one is less than five. Increment it. Continue. Do it again. Three, four. You get up to five, and it says, is i less than five? No. It skips this part because this did not evaluate to true. i is no longer less than five. It can finally hit this statement that says done equals true and break out of the loop. Let's put in some print statements in this example, some GS info, just to see what's going to happen. I is here, and we can even say I equals here. On this loop, we can say done equals done. And then we get down here, say gs.info. I think we're done. Always nice to do. I'm just putting in, whoop, I did not mean to hit tab. I meant to hit a couple spaces. Habit forming because scripts background does not have a script editor. And then gs.info will print out i that we're out of the loop. Just won't have anything with it. Let's see what happens. Fingers crossed, we're dealing with infinite loop potentiality here. One, two, three, four, five. Notice that it did not start printing at zero. Why not? And then it says, I think we're done. So finally hit that statement. We did not print zero because I incremented first, then printed. Could I have very well done this? Ooh, let's combine these statements. First, it will print it as the value, then increment. Remember prefix and postfix? There's another way of doing that. Let's print that. Now I get zero, one, two, three, four, because why? Because first it uses the value of i in this GS info statement, then increments it once it's done using it. Look at this, I had three pluses together. Make sure you don't uh, take too many spaces away. If I had done this, it would print one, two, three, four, five, and the final value will still be five because it increments it before it uses it. So again, quick review of prefix and postfix increment. Just a couple different ways of doing that. So that is a while loop. While the condition is true, remember this is true, while not done. Because done is false, not inverts it to a true, makes it true. I don't use these too often, but they are nice when something else is going to catch me. Make sure if you have a while loop, you have some safety way to break out of it. If you're counting and the counter goes above 10,000, that's a good, what I call a watchdog counter. It says, hey, if the counter gets too high, we're clearly not doing something right. Let's do a break and break out of this while loop. So not a bad idea to use break. Continue is, is equally well if you've got one condition that says, okay, don't process anything further, but let's just continue. It's sort of a shortcut way of doing an else. So I could have done an else done equals true here, but 
continue is, hey, I don't feel like indenting a whole series of code. Let's just go up and do another iteration of this loop and check if it's still true. So that's a little bit about while loops. Hope you find them useful. I'm going to talk about some more looping in the next video. So I'll see you there. Bye.